Hi everyone, thank you for joining me to a new video by Original Video Reviews. As you can see, we have here a new package and as always, we're going to find out together what's inside and how to use this thing. So let's not waste any time. Let me grab the Swiss knife, here is the Swiss knife and we're going to unpackage this thing. and girls, especially the girls, what we have here is a universal wireless Bluetooth controller by Mokut and according to the Mokut website, this model is the Mokut 039. If you recall, I already reviewed one gamepad by the same brand Mokut and I did not gain much success with it, so I hope that this time the outcome will be different. This controller should fit PCs, Android based devices and iOS based devices. The controller can be used for example as a gamepad, it can control the camera shutter if you want for example to take selfies and it can operate as a wireless mouse, it can be used as a music remote control, it will allow you to scroll between ebook pages and it can also navigate PowerPoint presentations. Let's take a closer look at the Mokut 039 controller. It is considered a mini controller because of its size but it is very convenient to hold this controller either horizontally with both hands or vertically in one hand. It has a rectangular shape with curved edges. It comes in nice white and green colors but you probably can find it in other colors. It weighs 27 grams and you can work with it up to a distance of 10 meters. At the front side of the controller you can see four different light indicators. This one is the charging mode, it's shown in red light indicator. Next to it is the key mode which is shown in blue light indicator. This means that the device will be operated vertically in one hand. The game mode is shown also in blue light indicator and this means that the device will be operated horizontally in two hands. And this one is for the mouse mode which is shown in green light indicator. The mouse mode is not supposed to work with Apple devices and I will explain about it in several moments. The D-pad goes 360 degrees. These are the start and select buttons, X, Y, A, B buttons and the M button which is a short for mouse. On the left side of the controller we have the drag button which is relevant if you're going to use the controller in mouse mode when holding the controller in one hand. On the right side of the controller we have the micro USB socket to charge the device. The controller has a built-in rechargeable battery that should last for approximately 10 hours. You can charge the controller with the 5 volts USB cable. I would like to mention that the package did not include a cable to charge the controller which is a bit disappointing. At the bottom of the controller we have a switcher to choose between key mode and game mode. When you're gonna choose this one it will affect the light indicator here. Either it's gonna be game mode or key mode. And there's also a reset button to reset the definitions of the controller. This is the back of the controller and we can see here six different buttons. Each one controls a specific feature. The symbol of the camera controls the shutter of the camera, let's say in your smartphone. The plus and minus buttons, they control volume level, zoom in and zoom out and so on and on and on. The play, pause, fast forward and backward, they are intended to control apps such as music player. If you want to control a specific app, for example music player or camera, first you need to open the relevant app or software and then you will be able to use it in the specific app or software using those buttons. I tried those buttons in order to control the music player and the camera apps on my smartphone, the Notorious Galaxy S5, and I can tell you that it worked perfectly. You can see here the Mokut logo and next to it there is a QR code. When scanning the QR code it will take you to the apps market where you can download relevant apps and games to use with this controller. In addition to the controller the package included this quiche plastic part which is actually a stand for your mobile device. And of course that the package included this user manual which is in English and as always I urge you to read the user manual but I know that the majority of the people who are gonna buy this controller are not gonna read the user manual so the OVR guy which is I did the dirty job for you and here's what I think you should know about this controller but first I need to tell you something. It was very frustrating and tiring user manual to read so I can tell you that I'm really proud of myself for doing that and I hope that what I'm gonna say now about this controller will apply to other game controllers that I reviewed in the past and I will review in the future because if I will have to read such a user manual in the future again it will just break me. 
In order to turn the controller on, you have to press the start button for 2 seconds and if you want to turn it off, you have to press the start button for 5 seconds. If you turn on the controller and it doesn't connect to any Bluetooth device for the first 5 minutes, it will turn off. And if you turn on the controller and it connects to a Bluetooth device but it's not active for 3 minutes, it will turn off. Right now it's going to be a bit long explanation, but if you will listen carefully to what I'm gonna say, you won't have any problems to operate this controller. When turning the controller on, the LED light will flash and the controller will enter into Bluetooth pairing mode automatically in order to find a device to connect to. If the controller connects to a Bluetooth device, the light indicator will turn off although it's still working. If the controller is defined with device number 1, but you want to pair it with device number 2, which is a new device, in order to avoid the auto connection to device number 1, you need to press the start button for 8 consecutive seconds when the controller is turned off. You will see the blue indicator flashing and the controller will go to pairing mode, which will allow you to connect it with device number 2. I'm going to explain now about the four different modes that this controller offers. Keep in mind that every time you define a specific mode, it will be the default mode for the next time you'll be using this controller. The first mode is the stand automatic mode. This is the default mode for the first time you'll be using this controller. This mode will fit the majority of the devices that runs Android operating system and PC computers. I managed to connect the controller this way to both my smartphone, the Notorious Galaxy S5, and to my laptop, which runs Windows 10 on it. So make sure that you're doing the following. Hold the A button followed by the start button, first you will see the green mouse indicator followed by the blue game or key indicator. In standard Android devices the X and Y buttons will operate as confirmation buttons and the A and B buttons will operate as return buttons. The second mode is Android MTK mode. If you have an Android operating system yet nothing happens in the first mode you should try this one which is relevant to several Android devices. Don't ask me what the MTK combination represents because I just don't know. You should hold the Y button followed by the start button. First you will see the red charging indicator followed by a blue game or key indicator. The third mode is the Apple iCade mode. This mode is relevant for iOS devices and in order to enjoy the iCade mode you have to download a special app called iCade from the App Store. First you need to press the B button followed by the start button and then you will see the blue game indicator followed by the blue game or key indicator. And the fourth mode is the Apple iOS mode. I guess this mode applies to other Apple apps that are not the iCade. You should hold the X button followed by the start button. First you will see the blue key indicator followed by the blue game or key indicator. You can use the controller as a mouse in game mode. This will work only with Android based devices. Make sure that the switch is on game mode, press the M button, and now button X will operate as volume up, button A will operate as volume down, button B will operate as left key for the mouse, and button Y will operate as a return key. In order to use the controller in one hand like this, which is relevant if you want to use it with the media features, make sure that the switch is on the key mode, press the M button, and now button X will operate as volume up, A will operate as volume down, B will operate as mute button, and Y will operate as a return button. If you're going to use the controller in Apple devices, the buttons will operate as following. X will be volume up, A will be volume down, B will be the mute button, and Y will be the home button. You can lock the controller by pressing the select and M buttons at the same time. This is supposed to prevent from other buttons to affect the controller if pressed and releasing the lock by pressing again the same buttons. In order to download relevant games for this controller, you can scan the QR code it appears on the back of the controller or in the user manual or you can go to www.mocute.com. You will enter a download center that will allow you to download plenty of relevant games and apps. I recommend you to check that, but keep in mind that this is not an official Google Play or App Store and I'm not sure how safe this thing is. I did manage to play all the arcade games on this computer using this controller, so I believe it will work with most of the available games in the market. I can tell you that the response time was immediate and there was no noticeable delay. Well guys and girls, especially the girls, this was my video review about the MoQ039 Universal Wireless Bluetooth Controller. I hope that by watching this video review you managed to learn how to operate this controller. For further information about this controller, please check the description to this video. If you still have any questions about this controller, please comment on this video and I will do my best to come up with an answer. 
If this video review was helpful and you enjoyed watching it, I invite you to like this video. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel's original video reviews, OVR Fashion and OVR Kids that I recently launched. And there's also the Facebook page and the Google Plus page and the Twitter account and the Instagram account, so there are plenty ways for you to follow original video reviews. I would like to thank you for watching another great video by Original Video Reviews. Until next time, bye bye.